Thank you all for coming. I can't believe that we were able to get all three AI-voiced presidents in a D&D campaign. Well, Ben, we are glad to be here. Thank you for hosting this session. Of course. Before we get started, a quick overview of the campaign. I am Ben Shapiro, your Dungeon Master. We will be starting at level three for this campaign. Was everyone able to set up their characters before this session? Yeah, it was a piece of cake. You got lost, Joe. I had to pretty much make your whole character for you. I don't know what you are talking about, Donald. I did it all on my own. I saw Donald make your character for you, Joe. No, you must have been seeing things. I did not need any help. Ben, we need to get started. I can already feel a nap coming on. Yes, let's get started. The party find themselves on the road, traveling with an ambassador named Thorn. A few weeks ago, each of you received a letter from King Rex, hiring you as bodyguards for Thorn in traveling to a small town named Loudwater. After meeting Thorn at a tavern outside Fandelver, you left with him in a wagon making the two-day trek towards Loudwater. Why are we accompanying him again, and what's so important about this town? Christ Joe, did you not read the letter? There is a rumor of a magical artifact that makes people not get sick in Loudwater, and King Rex is paying well to obtain it. Yeah, Christ Joe, just read the letter. Sorry, forgot there was a letter. My bad, guys. No worries, Joe. Happens to everyone. And yes, Obama is correct. Rumors of the magical artifact reached King Rex, and he dispatched Thorn as an ambassador to try to retrieve it. In his letter, he mentioned that there is a plague on his land, and he hopes the artifact can remedy that. Do you each want to introduce your characters? Donald? I am playing a variant human fighter named Donatello. He is from the distant land of Trumpville. And the letter from King Rex was no surprise as Donatello is the greatest fighter in all of Trumpville. Seems a bit strong of a backstory for a level three fighter, but oh well. I might be a level three fighter, but I could whip your ass any day. Maybe right now, but just wait until I hit level five and unlock Fireball. That's right, I am playing an elf wizard named Barak. Real creative, Barack. It's a good name for a wizard, okay? Anyways, I'm from Neverwinter and studied at the academy there. I just graduated a few weeks ago and I'm anxious to begin to explore the world with my newfound magical abilities. Well, I came up with a great backstory, but I don't remember what it was. However, I am playing a gnome ranger named Joden, which is Joe combined with Biden, if you were wondering. I don't remember my backstory, but let's just say that I grew up in a normal home with normal parents who like camping. And as a young adult, I took it to the next level and became part of the Rangers Guild. That was the same backstory that you had sent me in our chat, which is impressive since you didn't remember it. All right. Now that you have introduced your characters, night begins to fall and you begin to make camp for the night. What are your characters doing? I will use my nature abilities to hunt down dinner for us. Barack, do you mind starting the fire? Good idea, Joe. Donatello, will you help me gather wood for the fire? Then I will cast Firebolt on the wood to ignite it. No way am I doing that. I'm going to go lean against a tree and just watch over the camp. Barack, after seeing Donatello's refusal to help, Thorn offers to assist you in gathering wood. After gathering enough wood, you light the fire using Firebolt. Joe, will you roll a nature check with advantage because of your ranger class? to see what you are able to find, hunt for dinner? Of course. That's a 19. All right. You are able to hunt down several rabbits and gather an assortment of edible berries. You will be eating well tonight. I also want to roll nature to see if I can hunt stuff. I can definitely find more stuff than Sleepy Joe over there. That, that's bullshit. I rolled a three. Do I get advantage too? No, you don't have much experience in the wilds. That's still bullshit. I have more experience than Joe in everything. But fine, what do I catch with a three? You find some wild mushrooms. Sweet, I eat all the mushrooms instead of bringing them back to camp. Donatello, you take four poison damage from ingesting toxic mushrooms and become poisoned. God damn it, Donald. Why did you eat just random mushrooms that you found? Couldn't you just bring them back and have Joe identify them? That's bullshit. My character would never eat toxic mushrooms. He is far too smart and charismatic for that. Donatello's wisdom and intelligence are both eight. I don't think he is smart enough to know the difference between safe and dangerous mushrooms, especially with a three on your nature check. Fine, well, I force myself to throw up all of the toxic mushrooms so I'm not poisoned anymore. All right, I'll allow it. Barack, as you are gathering wood, Thorn thanks you for accompanying him on this journey. I have not traveled much outside of my homeland, at least not for many years, so I appreciate the protection that you and your friends are providing. Of course, I was anxious to explore the world, and getting paid for it sounded like a great idea. I'm glad we were able to help as well. Yes, of course, I hope the 25 gold is sufficient for your sacrifices. It isn't the most gold that I've seen for sure, but it seems a fair price for a one-way trip. If you would like, I could offer an additional 25 gold for taking me back to Fandelver following our trip. Yeah, that sounds like a good deal. How long will you be in Loudwater for? Thorn nervously looks over at the wagon, 
before hastily looking back. I don't imagine it will be for too long, a week at most. We are not even sure yet if there is an artifact there or not. His behavior raises my suspicion, but I don't show any sign of it. Of course, let me check with my companions, but I am sure that we can do that. Thank you. It's no problem. I go look for Joe and Donatello, hoping to find them in the forest and away from the camp. You find a sick Donatello not far into the forest, vomit covering a small bed of mushrooms. No way. No, I am much too strong to just be sick over some mushrooms that I ate. Roll a constitution saving throw. Damn, these dice are rigged. That's a five. With your constitution added? Yeah, a two on the dice and plus three for constitution. All right, you are definitely sick then. Fine, but I'm going to act like everything is fine. Roll for performance. Sweet, that's a natural 20. All right, Joden and Barack, you find Donatello just a short distance in the forest, standing tall over a pile of vomit and a bed of mushrooms, looking like there is nothing wrong. Okay, not quite sure what happened here, but I wanted to ask you guys something. How much do we trust this Thorn guy? He seems kind of shady to me. Who is Thorn? What? Joe, he is the guy who we are protecting and taking to Loudwater. Oh, right, I knew that. What makes him seem shady to you? Just the way he was acting by the camp just now. He seemed like he was hiding something in the cart. Well, he did bring quite a few crates of negotiating items. Could be something in one of those. That's what I was thinking. Joden, do you think you could distract him so that Donatello and I can investigate the cart? Yeah, I can do that. No problem at all. I go up to Thorn and begin talking to him about the surrounding trees. Okay, I'll have you roll for performance now. I rolled a 13. Okay. Out of politeness, Thorn listens to you, but you can tell he isn't really interested. Great. Good job, Joe. Donatello and I will now sneak up to the cart and try to look in some of the crates. All right. Do you both want to roll for stealth? Hell yeah, I got an 18. That's what I'm talking about. My character is the best. I did okay. I got a 12. All right. You both pass since Thorn is distracted. Looking through the boxes, you find some gold and other trinkets that Thorn is probably looking to trade for the artifact. One of the crates near the bottom you are unable to pry open, however. It seems some magical force is keeping it closed shut. I steal the gold. How much is it? You steal 50 pieces of gold. Damn nice haul, Donald. Are you going to share that with the party? Hell no, this is all mine. I earned it fair and square, and I'm keeping it. Fine, be that way. Can I pick up the lock crate? You can. You find that the crate is quite light. I take it over to the campfire and ask Thorn what is in it. Thorn, mind telling us what is in this crate? Roll for insight. Cool, I got an 18. You notice that he looks uncomfortable. Stammering, he says, Oh, that, that is nothing. There is just some trinkets for trading for the artifact. Nothing important. Will you open it then? Thorn begins to shake his head no. I'm sorry, but I... I draw my sword and level it at his chest. Open the box. Do it. Now. Whoa, okay, fine. I'll open the box. He reaches out and flips open the lid. Obviously, it is no longer locked. I push him back to make sure that he doesn't grab anything from it. Okay. He is not able to grab anything from it. Looking inside, you see a collection of vials containing a swirling mist. See? Nothing to be alarmed about. What is that? It is a magical mist. Breaking a vial will cause a mist to spread out and conceal the user. Useful for hiding a small group in plain sight. I take all of the vials. Okay, you can do that, but he will likely fire you if you do. Your job is to transport him safely to Loudwater. Fine, I ask if I can take a single one of the vials. How many are there? There is a half dozen or so. Thorn declines, saying I need all of these to trade for the artifact. I'm not sure what the townspeople will accept. Why were you so shifty about this container? Well, these are somewhat illegal in the Sword Coast. I could be arrested if authorities knew I had smuggled them in. Why are they illegal? They don't seem that potent compared to some of the other magic that is used. Well, just over a century ago, a group of assassins used magic like this to kill a group of nobles in Waterdeep. It caused a citywide panic, and the guards couldn't do anything to stop it. Finally, the university stepped in and controlled the riots, but this magic was banned because of it. Can I roll insight to see if he's telling the truth? Yeah, sure. Six, that wasn't great. You are pretty sure he's telling the truth. Okay, then. I think I am done questioning him. I apologize and try to make sure he knows that we are just trying to stay on the right side of things. He accepts your apology and become a bit more at ease around you. So what do we do now? Well, do you guys want to set a watch or anything? I can take the first watch. I have some work to do in my spell book anyway. I can take the second one. I'm feeling quite tired. Okay, I'll take third watch then. All right. Barak's and Joden's watch pass uneventfully. During Donatello's watch, Thorn emerges from his tent and takes watch with you. Does he know I took the gold? Perhaps roll an insight check. Fifteen. It doesn't seem like he knows.
I was hopeful you would accept this job, he says. I have heard tell of your accomplishments and am pleased to have such a skilled fighter with us. I knew my fighter was the best fighter in Trumpville. Take that, Barack. Thorne is just trying to get on your good side, Donatello. Well, it's working. I smile back and say thank you. I'm not surprised that someone like King Rex would want someone like me on this job. It means he knows the job will get done. Yes, that was his thoughts exactly. I hope you don't mind me watching with you. I don't sleep much nowadays. Sleep is for the weak. That is what I always say, at least. I came up with that saying, you know. I didn't know that. It's a good saying. Yeah, it is. As the two of you chat, suddenly, a long form flies out of the darkness, striking Thorn in the chest. He falls backwards, calling out in pain as his head hits a rock, and he slips into unconsciousness. You see a ten-foot-long snake coil up on his chest, having just launched itself at him. Roll for initiative. How do we do that again? For goodness sakes, Joe, it is a D20 plus initiative. Every check in D&D is just a D20 plus whatever you're rolling for. I got an 8. Oh, right. I got a 13. I got a 17. All right. Since Joden and Barack are both in their tents, you are going to have to spend your first turn getting to the battle. I rolled a 15 for my snake. So, Donatello, you will go first. Of course I will. I am a trained fighter. All right. I am going to move and attack the snake with my long sword. Roll for attack. 16, does that hit? Yeah, that hits. Roll for damage. Damn it, that's only four damage. I rolled a one on the damage die. These dice are rigged. That still is not bad, though. It's pretty bad. All right, can I use my action surge to make another attack? Yeah, you can do that. Also, going forward, roll both damage and attack at the same time. It helps to speed things up a bit. I got a 14 to hit and an eight on damage. That's what I am talking about. I could beat all of you guys. And that does hit, too. As the snake coils on Thorn's chest, looking to sink its fangs into him, you come up and slash it twice, dealing a total of 12 damage. Moving fast, the snake turns around and lunges at you. That's a 15 to hit. With my shield, I have an 18 armor class. It doesn't hit me then. As fast as it was, Donatello was faster and brings up his shield, and the snake harmlessly bounces off. All right, for Joden and Barak's first turn, they still need to get up and leave their tents. So we will be back to Donatello. I don't even need their help. I slash at the snake with my sword again. 12 to hit and 9 on the damage. Unfortunately, you needed a 13 to hit. You swing for the snake, but it slithers out of your reach. Bullshit, I never missed a swing in my life. This game is definitely rigged. Well, you missed this one, Donatello. The snake rears back and strikes at you again, this time with a 19 to hit. You bring up your shield just a fraction of a second too late, taking 12 damage as the snake impales your shoulder with its fangs. Your shield knocks it off, but you definitely took a hit. Where the hell are Barak and Joden? Do I really have to do this all on my own? Speaking of Joden, it is your turn. Do I recognize the type of snake it is? I'll allow you to roll a nature check as your bonus action for turn. Sweet, that's a 17. All right. You recognize it as a subspecies of Jaculi, a type of large snake that coils up in trees and launches itself at prey. Typically, such a creature would not attack a group of adventurers, and definitely not when there is a fire in the camp. Guys, there is something strange going on here. This snake shouldn't have attacked. Why does that matter? It is attacking us. We got to kill it. That's fair, I guess. I aim my longbow at it and take a shot. Natural 20 to hit. Wow, that's awesome. So how critical hits work in this campaign is you will take the maximum you could roll and add it to whatever you roll. So it would be 3 plus 3 plus 8 damage? Yeah, if you rolled a 3 on your damage die. So 14 damage then? Yeah, I strike it right between the eyes. It slithers just barely to avoid its brain being split in two, but takes a heavy hit from your arrow. It is looking very wounded. My turn to finish the job then. I cast Scorching Ray at it. Okay, I think that allows you to make three attack rolls, yeah? Yeah, should I just roll to hit and damage for all three at the same time, or one at a time? Let's just do one at a time. Might make things a bit simpler. Okay, first one is a 13 to hit and a 5 on damage. All right, it takes the hit and is looking very ragged. Second one is a 10 to hit, so that misses. Yeah, that one misses. Third one is an 18 to hit and a 7 on damage. Nice. You finish off the Jaculi and it stops moving, steam and smoke rising off it as it smells like burnt chicken. I did most of that. I did the same amount of damage as you did Donatello. All right, guys, good job. Are there any other enemies around? No, it doesn't look like it. However, Thorn is unconscious on the ground still having suffered a big hit from the Jakuli. I cast Healing Word on him. That's seven points of healing. 
As you cast Healing Word, you notice his skin turn a dark purple and begin to burn. He awakes with a start, crying out in pain and scratching at the spot you healed him. Stop, stop, he cries out. I stop and back up. What did you do to him? I just tried to heal him. That was strange. Not that strange. Looks like he is probably an undead. Ah, uh, that would make sense. I ready another scorching ray. I draw my sword and point it at him again. What are you? Writhing in pain, he stammers, wait, wait, let me explain. I help him to his feet. The hell you are. This is a zombie Joden. If you had a brain, he would eat it. If he was going to eat our brains, he probably would have already. He seems to be at least a friendly undead. I agree with Joden. I lower my hands and help him up as well. Well, I am not dying today. I keep my sword raised. He stands up, clearly weak from the Jakuli blow and the healing spell. In the letter, King Rex told you about a magical plague on his land. Well, a part of that plague is that it turned the whole kingdom into undead. So yes, I am technically undead, but no, I don't eat brains. Most of us weren't even that affected by it, and some of the people didn't even realize they were dead until several days after. Wow, that sucks. Is that why you are after this artifact? Do you think it will heal everyone? Maybe, maybe not. But we don't have any other hopes. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, we should get this artifact for you then. I'll help, but I don't trust this guy. Undead or bad, period. Thorn heads back to his tent, collapsing on his small cot. Are you all heading to bed too, or what are you doing? I only needed to meditate, so I'll do that out here by the fire in case something else happens. I'm still on watch, so I'll stay by the fire too. I'm pretty tired. I'll head back to my tent. All right, we will end our first session there. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having us, Ben. It was fun. Tomorrow again? Sounds good to me. Works for me too. Tomorrow it is. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to help out the channel. Have a great day.